let's talk about Afghanistan. Afghanistan is, is uh, as you know, Joe Biden is fulfilling Donald Trump's promise. It's a promise Donald Trump never fulfilled. Actually, it's a promise that uh, Bush, Obama, and Donald Trump didn't fulfill, and Biden is fulfilling. And, uh, and uh, you know, you'd think uh, the right would be ecstatic about this and compliment um, Biden for fulfilling a promise made by Donald Trump, uh, one of the promises he didn't fulfill. But, of course, th that would never happen. Uh, and that is to leave Afghanistan and to bring all the troops home from Afghanistan. Now, I, I, I you know, I'm pro this decision. Uh, I think it's, I, I, I'm pro this decision in a context, right? Um, so I want to give you a little bit of history and what I think should have happened, why we have troops there to begin with, what should have been done, and given what was done, when they should have been brought home. I don't have the exact number of, of Americans who have died in Afghanistan, but it is, uh, it is I think, uh, you know, two or 3,000 American kids who have died in Afghanistan. And that doesn't count the tens of thousands who have been maimed, uh, who have suffered life-altering injuries, uh, soldiers who have been traumatized by what they've seen uh, in Afghanistan and what they've seen uh, through warfare, the, the, the months and months and months that soldiers have been in Afghanistan away from families, uh, to serve a mission of failure. So while this is not Biden's defeat, um, although he still has an opportunity to win it, but he won't. This is not Trump's defeat, although he had an opportunity to turn it around and he didn't. It's not Obama's defeat. Uh, I mean, it's all of their defeats. It's Bush's, and to some extent it is Obama's and, and Trump's. But it is a disgrace. It is pathetic that the United States, again, I don't know after how many times, is escaping the battlefield with its tail between its legs, cowered by barbaric insurgents who are uh, militarily much weaker, uh, who have do not have the capabilities, the capacities that the United States military has, the strongest, mightiest military force in all of human history, and that the United States is coward, terrified, running, Now, this is a war that should have been won after three months. Arguably, this is an occupation that should have never happened. It was never necessary. But even if it happened, it should have been quick. Uh, victory should have been decisive. And the troops should have been brought home 20 years ago. Okay, they only went 20 years ago. 19 years ago. The very idea that American troops have been in Afghanistan for 20 years and have lost, and let's be very clear, they have lost. The, the, the mission was to defeat the Taliban, to uh, depose them, to replace them with a democratically elected government, and to um, sustain that government, to, to create a, a sustainable democracy free country in quotes, in Afghanistan, in perpetuity. The United States has lost because it has not achieved any of those aims. The Taliban was never defeated. While we have a democracy in Afghanistan, that democracy will collapse as soon as the United States leaves. The Taliban is about to be victorious. It has already occupied almost half of the country. Uh, most of rural Afghanistan is in the hands of the Taliban. It has not occupied the cities, but it will. And why did those kids die? What was achieved by the U.S. military? What was achieved by invading Afghanistan? Yes, for 20 years. For 20 years, Al-Qaeda did not have a base of operations in Afghanistan. That is what was achieved. It was not the mission exactly. The mission was far more greater than that. But we all know Al-Qaeda will have a military base now in Afghanistan because the Taliban have been the allies in spite of what Trump and Biden promised us. 
They signed a peace deal with the Taliban, and the Taliban promised. They really did promise. They swore. They they really they signed a piece of paper saying that they would never let Al Qaeda back in. And they have the audacity, the audacity to tell us that they believe that 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 has any validity, as any credibility. If the political class in this country was honest, the whole lot of them, right and left, were honest, they would apologize. They would grovel before the families of the kids who died for nothing. They would admit that we have been defeated. They would admit that we achieved nothing. And they would apologize for the unnecessary death and destruction that they're brought upon American families. And no, the mission was not to capture Osama bin Laden. The mission was never to capture Osama bin Laden. To capture Osama bin Laden, it wasn't necessary to invade the country. By the time we invaded the country with significant force, Osama bin Laden was no longer in Afghanistan. The mission was to change Afghan society. Osama bin Laden was in Pakistan from, uh, from middle of 2002 on. It's been well documented. Did we ever penalize Pakistan for hosting bin Laden? No. Nobody cares about the mission. That was never the mission. And indeed, the mission to capture Osama bin Laden was, uh, was executed by uh, Obama. Did Lawler give Obama credit for when he did that. And yet we were still in Afghanistan when Biden took office. And Biden's taking us out of Afghanistan because that's what everybody's promised to do. And he's, he's fulfilling a promise. He should get credit for that. And I, I think they should come home. I think they should come. Now, my view of what it should, be, should have been done after 9-11, given the fact that the Taliban would not hand over bin Laden, given the fact that the Taliban was hosting bin Laden, given the fact that the Taliban were the, um, basically, uh, were philosophical allies and military allies of bin Laden, that the Taliban should have been wiped out. It should have been wiped out quickly, effectively, thoroughly, unequivocally. Bin Laden himself, during the first few months after 9-11, was often in the sightings of the Americans and they wouldn't shoot because they were afraid of killing civilians. There's a number of stories during that period of time where they could have killed him and they didn't. They should have gone in there. I don't even need think they needed ground troops. They should have gone in there with a the full might of the American Air Force they should have bombed and destroyed and, and killed as many Taliban politicians, leaders, soldiers. They should have left the place in utter devastation. Now, granted, Afghanistan was already devastated. They should have found bin Laden and everybody associated with it, everybody associated with him, and killed them. They should have, you remember that, they should have destroyed all the camps, they should have gone after the Taliban wherever they were and killed them. And they should have done that primarily from the air. They should have taken sides. They shouldn't have tried to, to, to bring democracy to Afghanistan. They shouldn't have had uh, uh, massive aid. They shouldn't have, we should have had massive numbers of ground troops, maybe some uh, special forces. They should have devastated anything the Taliban touched. And that's it. And come home. And basically said a very simple message. You attack us again, or you facilitate an attack against us again, or you host people that attack us again. This is what happens to you. Don't do it. Instead, we've been there for 20 years. Hundreds of kids, maybe several thousands dead. And now we run home with the tail between our legs. I mean, we have to. There's no, I'm not saying there's any alternative at this point, given that we're not willing to fight, given they're not willing to actually defeat the enemy. Um, 
I mean, you still could do. I mean, uh, um, somebody asked me last night, well, what would you do in Afghanistan? I said, yeah, it's easy. I would take the next three months and I would flatten anything that seemed like the Taliban. I would kill as many of them as possible. I would bomb them. I would find their leaders. I would kill their leadership completely, political leaders, military leaders, leaders. I would kill them. I would destroy them. I would devastate them. All their bases, all their operations. Again, we have the military capacity to do. This. And then, in one big swoop, I'd bring all the troops home. But then, I would bring them home as a victor, not as somebody who's been thoroughly, unequivocally, completely destroyed. That's what I would do. That's what it means to have an America first foreign policy. That's what it means to fight a war. That's what it means to win. Um, that's what it means to be an egoist. It means not to tolerate people who want to kill you. Not to tolerate people who want to kill you. And in foreign policy, that means if somebody comes and goes to war with you, kill them, destroy them. And by the way, if you did that, if you did that in Afghanistan, the Iranians would suddenly go, whoops, oh no, nuclear weapons? No, we're not interested in that. Forget it. We have no interest in it. If you just did it once, people would take notice. They would take notice. They don't want to die. Most of them, they don't want to die. <sighs> All right, so... I mean, the American military is just, and, and you could blame Biden or you could blame the generals. Or you could, I don't know who you want to blame. You could blame them all. I think they're all at fault here. They're all pathetic and, and ridiculous. But just not only are they, are they leaving Afghanistan the way they're leaving, but it really is tail between the legs. So they, they, they evacuated the Bagram Air Force Base. They did in the middle of the night. They didn't even tell their own Afghan troops because they were afraid the Afghans were in cahoots with the Taliban. Uh, so they so they, they they just evacuated and and the looters came in the next day and looted the the, the air force base. It's uh, that's how American leaves. It's Saigon, the last helicopter leaving the roof of Saigon. I I give Biden credit. This will be unusual, but I will give him credit for this. Um. Uh, that he uh, that they are evacuating all the translators. So uh, one of the horrible things that uh, the Trump administration did is they would not protect the, the people who worked with the Americans in Iraq and in, um, and in Syria. And they, they didn't guarantee them protection. So when they, 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 they wouldn't say that if the American troops left, they would basically take them with. Uh, they, they, it looks like they are going to take about 1,000 of these uh, Afghans who worked closely with the American military and provide them uh, with visas to come to the United States and hopefully ultimately get them here uh, and, and get, them, uh, get, them, get them to safety get them to safety because it would be, I mean, it would be treasonous. It would be just disgusting if, if we abandoned the people who actually helped us, um, whether a cause was the right cause or not. So um, it, it really, it saddens me uh, to see uh, the American military in such a pathetic state where this is how they're leaving a country and, and they've learned nothing from from uh, you know how they left Beirut, they've learned nothing from how they left, uh, uh, you know how they left time and time and time again uh, the different battlefields. Anyway, and and again, I don't think it's a Democrat or Republican. I think they're both a pox in both their houses. They're all, both awful when it comes to this. Completely, completely awful when it comes to this. Neither party wanted to win, and then leave, right? And, and leave, we should have left, we should have left in 2002. We should have arrived, destroyed, and left. I don't believe in building up countries. If an enemy is identified, crush them and leave. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life 
and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.